Hello and welcome to our 10th Friday freebie quiz. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I've just got a couple of words to say uh, before I hand you over to our fabulous uh, quiz host, Sean Williamson. So firstly, um, please don't cheat. I know I say it every single week, uh, but please don't cheat. Um, and if you must cheat, please don't put your scores in. It just spoils it for everybody. So please, please don't cheat. Secondly, please don't write the answers anywhere publicly. Uh, people will be playing this quiz this evening and it will also stay up uh, forever and ever um, and so people will be playing it at any point so please don't uh, put the answers around because that upsets people as well um, and also um, I will be available on Facebook if you fancy having a chat afterwards I'd love to know how you find the quiz um, and uh, to, to learn all about everybody that's playing so that would be brilliant so our Facebook page you just go onto Facebook write quizzing TV always one word and you will find me there after the quiz okay so that's all from me then I am now going to hand you over to our fabulous quiz master Sean Williamson thank you Jane Allen hi everybody it's Sean Williamson here welcome back to this the biggest international online lockdown quiz in the world it's Friday night it's eight o'clock and this is our tenth week we've been going as long as the pregnancy duration of an otter how about that hey eh? 10 weeks. So whether you're tuning in from Japan or Jakarta, Belfast or Berlin, Auckland or Armagh, you are very welcome indeed. How was your week? How is lockdown going in your individual country? I tell you what, my, my local town, there's so many uh, shops and pubs boarded up. The window cleaner is doing his rounds with a sander. Honestly, it's a nightmare. And I don't know, I'm getting too used to this. I'm becoming like a bit of a hermit. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I've had my front doorbell removed, and I can't tell you the knock-on effect that's had. I think I'm just getting lazy, and I've just made some new shoes from banana skins. They're so easy to slip on, you know. Anyway, welcome, everybody. Uh, as you know, it is a truly international quiz from around the world, wherever you're tuning in from. If you're new, let me explain very quickly what happens if you are new. Welcome, by the way. Uh, so there are four rounds. Rounds one, two and four uh, consist of 10 general knowledge questions. Round three is a picture round. OK, uh, and that's it, really. And then at the end, you feed your result into the system. Jane Ellen will be back to tell you all about that and any other news that you need to know. So uh, welcome. Now, last week, uh, we realized that the uh, uh, quiz from two weeks ago was was uh, reasonably easy. I mean, we had eight. I think we had eight teams get 40. We had so many teams get 39, we didn't even put them up because uh, I'd still be reading them out now. So last week we made it a little bit trickier and it did the trick because this is last week's leaderboard. So in joint third on 37, we had uh, Pat Gibson, Vivian Jones, uh, Ryan Lewenden, the Maidments, Chris Lamb, Roman Watts, Alan Sharp and Team Disley. Some incredibly strong quizzes in there. In second place on 38, we had uh, Michael Law, the Yeoman Infantry, Les Flat Brut, <laughs> and from France, and James Morton from Scotland. Now, did anyone get the 40? They didn't. You see, we didn't get a 40 last week. That's how difficult it was. We got Jeff Makin from the Isle of Man. Welcome, Jeff. Uh, our, uh, as far as we know, you're the, our, our Isle of Man representative. Uh, the Pharaohs, the Sheppey Superstars, and Jake, Derry, and Maverick, you all scored 39. Many congratulations to all of you. So there were no 40s. Uh, maybe it was the, the the picture round last time was a dog round, pictures of dogs. Maybe that's what trip, tripped a few people up. Maybe that's how uh, some people scored heavily that don't normally score heavily. So who knows? But all I know is it worked. We didn't get any 40s. Uh, and it was a tricky week. And as a result, maybe this week it's slightly easier. It's Difficult to uh, fine tune these things uh, sometimes, but as long as you're enjoying it, that's the main thing. So I've also been doing my own uh, research for uh, quizzing. Uh, there's, there's a massive quiz happening on uh, Saturday morning, and we're going to tell you all about that uh, during the course of this quiz. It's very exciting news to do with the World Championships. Uh, so I've been doing my, uh, I've been brushing up on my general knowledge. Did you know that Alexander the Great is credited with uh, inventing the first sort of basic wristwatch? So what he'd do, he'd put a piece of old sort of rag on his wrist, he'd soak it, and then he could judge the hour by the time it took for the band to dry. Yeah. It was Alexander's ragtime band. 
Alexander's Ragtime Band. Let's start round one. Good luck. Round one, question one. The Welcome Stranger is the largest nugget of what metal ever found? The Welcome Stranger is the largest nugget of what metal ever found? What could it be? What could it be? You have a good guess. So that's question one. Question two, very much in the news at the moment, taking its name from a mythical creature. What is the name of SpaceX's reusable spacecraft that was launched from Falcon 9 on the 30th of May 2020? Taking its name from a mythical creature, what was the name of SpaceX's reusable spacecraft that was launched from Falcon 9 on the 30th of May 2020? See how much you keep up with the news. That's all going on as we speak. Round one, question three. What colour traditionally is absinthe? What colour is absinthe traditionally? I see the government to increase spending on flood defences. There's more money down the drain, isn't it? All right, man. Still, what do I know? Question three. What colour is absinthe? Traditionally. Question number four for all of you who are young at heart, getting his better known nickname because of his scruffy hair. Which cartoon character's real name is Norville Rogers? Getting his better known nickname because of his scruffy hair. Which cartoon character's real name is Norville Rogers? I've insured my collection of 70s records. Yeah. Earth, Wind, Fire and Theft. Good. Good. Anyway, question five. The name of which children's toy is derived from the Danish for play well? The name of which children's toy is derived from the Danish for play well? Very popular, very popular toy. Guaranteed it's played a part in your life somewhere along the way. Good luck with that. Question six. Here's one for our Norwegian friends. We know we've got some Norwegian participants tonight. In Norway, which of the Mr. Men is called her dumpy dump? In Norway, which of the Mr. Men is called her dumpy dump? And I'll give you a clue, it's not Mr. Ploppy. <laughs> there it is. In Norway, which of the Mr. Men is called her dumpy dump? Question seven. Pup music. Which chart-topping singer refers to her fans as little monsters? Affectionately, I'm sure. Which chart-topping singer refers to her fans as little monsters? I went jogging earlier. I was overtaken by the Kardashians. I couldn't keep up with them. I tell you. Couldn't keep up with them. So which chart-topping singer refers to her fans as little monsters? Question number eight, sport. How many points are awarded to the winning driver of a Formula One Grand Prix? How many points are awarded to the winning driver of a Formula One Grand Prix? It's coming back soon. It's imminent, I believe, is the word imminent. I tell you. They waste that champagne, though, don't they? Terrible, really. Question number nine. First made in Cologne in 1799, 4711 is believed to be the world's oldest what? 
that's still in production. First made in Cologne in 1799, 4711 is believed to be the world's oldest what that's still in production. I watched the film Scarface last night. Very disappointing. It knew nothing about scarves. Nothing. Shocking. Okay, so first man in Cologne, 1799. It was known as 4711. When first produced, it's believed to be the world's oldest what that's still in production. And the final round of uh, round one is question 10, which is usually the brightest planet in our solar system when viewed from Earth, which is usually the brightest planet in our solar system when viewed from Earth. I used to use a mnemonic to remember the planets. Who is it? My very educated mother just served us. <laughs> I can't remember. Something, it was something pasta, but Pluto isn't there anymore. They jog Pluto on, bless it. So which is usually the brightest planet in our solar system when viewed from Earth? Well, that's it. Let's have a recap on uh, all of the questions from round one. Question one, the welcome stranger is the largest nugget of what metal ever found? Question two, taking its name from a mythical creature, what is the name of SpaceX's reusable spacecraft that was launched from Falcon 9 on 30th of May 2020? Number three, what colour is absinthe traditionally? Question four, getting his better known nickname because of his scruffy hair, which cartoon character's real name is Norville Rogers? Question five, the name of which children's toy is derived from the Danish for play well? Question six, in Norway, which of the Mr. Men is called her Dumpy Dump? Question seven, which chart-topping singer refers to her fans as little monsters? Question eight, how many points are awarded to the winning driver of a Formula One Grand Prix? Question nine, first made in Cologne in 1799, 4711 is believed to be the world's oldest what that's still in production. And question 10, which is usually the brightest planet in our solar system when viewed from Earth. I'll give you uh, 10 seconds to um, jot down any, any blanks you've got. Never leave a blank. Just write anything. First rule of quizzing. I got my new debit card through the other day. It came with a French fry and a needle. It's chip and pin. Brilliant. So... There are the 10 questions of round one. As I say, don't leave any blanks. Just have a guess. Any wild guess could be right. Because here are the answers. Good luck. Number one, the welcome stranger, the largest nugget of gold ever found. It weighed 12, over, over 12 stone. That's almost as much as I weigh. <laughs> it weighed the same as one of my legs. Unbelievable. Yeah. Answer number two, the uh, SpaceX reusable spacecraft, it was called or is called Crew Dragon. Now, we only need the word dragon. Officially, it's Crew Dragon. Also, we can accept Dragon 2. Well, well done if you wrote Dragon 2, but Dragon is the is the word we need. Question three, the answer was, what colour is absinthe? Green, particularly potent spirit. I know it was outlawed in France for uh, for many years, I think. The answer to number four, uh, better known as, uh, well, his real name is Norville Rogers. He's better known as which cartoon character? Shaggy in the Scooby-Doo cartoons. Question number five, the answer to the children's toy derived from Danish for play well? Lego. Number six, in Norway, the Mr. Man called her Dumpy Dump is Mr. Bump. Number seven, which chart-topping singer refers to her fans as Little Monsters? Lady Gaga. Number eight, the points awarded for the winning driver of a Formula One Grand Prix are 25 points. 
the answer to number nine. Now, it was originally called 4711. It's believed to be the world's oldest. It was first made in Cologne. It's perfume. Okay, uh, we'll accept we'll accept Eau de Cologne because we use the word Cologne. So we can't just have Cologne. We use the word Cologne in the question. So Eau de Cologne will accept, but it's basically the world's oldest perfume and is uh, still known, isn't it, by um, Eau de Cologne. And the answer to number 10, the brightest planet usually in the solar system is Venus. Well done. I reckon a few of you would have scored maximum points there, although some of them were tricky. I reckon some of our regular quizzes would have done well on that round. Although, as I say, there was enough there to trip people up. So, nice first round there. How did you do? Okay, it's time for our shout outs. Uh, and here they are for this week. Uh, we've got the Ginger Ninjas. We've got Tom and Laura in Morpeth. Hoof hearted. <laughs> Evan, age six and a half, is playing for the Splatproot. I was told how to pronounce that. Still got it wrong. Is that right? Le Splatproot, and it means something naughty in French. Hello, Evan. Great to see you, mate. Susan and Simon, Crotz and Lorraine in Madeira. Welcome. Regina Verhaus, welcome. The Quiz family and Punky, the Campions, the many Bell families of Nidderdale. Welcome to you. Devon Lakes, uh, the Clarkies of Portsmouth, Tanya, Poppy and Daisy. The Damn Squids, see what they did there from the Netherlands. Nice name. Ray Hamill from the USA. Howdy, sir. Locked down deeper and down for all you status quo fans. Uh, we've got Tierney there. Hello, Tierney. Uh, happy birthday to Tierney. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Tierney. Happy birthday to you. Sean Prawn and the Ghouls of Baza Towers. We've got Team Poland. Uh, Hi to you guys. So tune in every week. We've got Catherine Burkett, a regular on the Grand Prix circuit. Hello, Catherine. We've got the Maidments. We've got Sean, Jacques and Alexa from Cy and Lou. Hello to them from you. And we've got Tommy, Katie and Baby James. Now, Baby James is the first grand, uh, is, is, is the grandchild of Martin. Martin plays every week and literally James has just been born. So Martin can't see James yet. Give him a wave, Martin. Maybe he's up at the screen. Who knows? Ah, oh, what a lovely story. You'll be seeing baby James uh, very soon, I hope, Martin. Hello to everybody. Uh, and uh, if you want to have a shout out for next week, Jane will tell you how at the end. OK, let's get on with round two, shall we? This is Sean's teaser. Uh, what was the first number one hit for the Beatles in the USA in January 1964. There's no points for this. It's just to give you something to ponder during the round uh, whilst the round is on. Uh, not as easy as you think. What was the first number one hit for the Beatles in the USA in January 64? I've seen some sources say it was the 1st of February it hit the charts, but the official Billboard book says January 64. So what was the name of their first number one in America? Good luck. Okay, here's the first question of round two proper. Which country has the longest coastline. Which country has the longest coastline? There are a few candidates for that one. It could easily be a choice, well, definitely could be a choice of three for me, maybe four or five. Which country has the longest coastline, the most coastline? We put that in first. Uh, we might need to have a little think about that. Question number two. One of the biggest soap whodunits involved Kristen Shepherd shooting who? One of the biggest soap whodunits involved Kristen Shepherd shooting who? Here's a joke for our American friends, right? I know we've got some American friends. I was in a supermarket earlier, right? And I said to um, one of the staff members, if I keep, uh, uh, could you throw me two red salad fruits if, if I keep two metres away? He said, you mean tomatoes? I said, you say tomatoes, I say two metres. No, we'll just keep going, shall we? No matter really. Biggest soap we've done, it's involved Christian Shepherd shooting who? 
Question three. Ah, okay, it's a good one. The creation of which mathematical symbol is commonly credited to Robert Record of Oxford University in 1556? The creation of which mathematical symbol is commonly credited to Robert Record of Oxford University in 1556? Uh, it's in that picture. That's all I can say, really. And it was a long time ago. So... Tiny clue for you, and it's in that picture. Which mathematical symbol credited as long ago as 1556? I'll leave it up there for another few seconds. Good luck. If you don't know, there's loads to take a guess at, isn't there? Question four, science and nature. Vanilla is a member of which plant family? Vanilla? is a member of which plant family? And there's a picture of one. Doesn't really give you a clue. You know what? All my life I've been bad at running. I've been terrible at cycling. I've been even awful at swimming. And I went to the doctor. He found out what it is. I've got triathlete's foot. So that's, it's just nice to know sometimes, isn't it? Vanilla, member of which plant family? Question five. The crew of the De Gratia discovered which ship abandoned near the Azores in 1872. The crew of the De Gratia discovered which ship abandoned near the Azores in 1872. Reasonably really well known, it's gone into legend. The De Gratia, they discovered which ship abandoned near the Azores in 1872. Question number six, sci-fi films. I wouldn't have had a clue with this one. Good luck. Which colour pill did Neo choose in the Matrix? Which colour pill did Neo choose in the Matrix? Very, very popular series of films, I know. But uh, I just never saw them. But you probably did. Which colour pill did Neo choose in the Matrix? Is the open university closed? I'm just asking for a friend, really. Is Yale University still on lockdown? I don't know these things. I don't know. Just wondered. Matrix, colour pill, Neo, question six. Question seven. Which landlocked country is bordered by Italy to the south, France to the west, Germany to the north, and Austria and Liechtenstein to the east. Which landlocked country is bordered by Italy to the south, France to the west, Germany to the north, and Austria and Liechtenstein to the east? Even a little map there for you. So we'll take that away, shall we? <laughs> Good luck with that one. Question eight. There's a personal reason for me asking this question. I'll explain uh, during the answers. This is the flag of Argentina. Write down the name of its capital city, spelt correctly. Simple as that. This is the flag of Argentina. Write down the name of its capital city, spelt correctly. So a bit of a, uh, a joint question there. You've got to know, know the name of the city and then spell it correctly. Good luck. I'm feeling sorry for all the plasterers who are working from home. They must feel like the walls are closing in on them. Do you know what I mean? I what about those poor those girls who dance in the rap videos? They're twerking from home. It's all going on, I tell you. It's all going on. So we need to know the name of the capital city uh, of Argentina. But even more importantly, you've got to spell it correctly. Good luck. Question nine. Lovely question this, a bit of a riddle. Uh, which word precedes vest, beans, and quartet? Not a riddle, but a slightly different question. Which word precedes vest, beans, and quartet? What word could go before any of those words? Question 
I would think. What can go before rest beams and quartets? And round two, question number 10 is on television. The first CSI TV series, CSI Crime Scene Investigation, was set in which city? There's been a few series of it, and they're always being repeated. Uh, but, but the original CSI TV series was set in which city? It's a very famous city. So you can have a guess at that if you're not sure. Very famous. But have you watched it? That's the thing. I think I've been confused. There's at least three that I can think of. They've set three different series in three different cities. They're all very well known. American cities. They're, it's an American city. That's all I'm going to give you. So at least you can guess at one. Right. Let's have a recap of those questions. And this is round two. Number one, which country has the longest coastline? Question two, one of the biggest soap whodunits involved Christian Shepherd shooting who? Number three, the creation of which mathematical symbol is commonly credited to Robert Record of Oxford University in 1556? Number four, vanilla is a member of which plant family? Number five, the crew of the De Gratia discovered which ship abandoned near the Azores in 1872? Number six, which color pill did Neo choose in the Matrix? Number seven, which landlocked country is bordered by Italy to the south, France to the west, Germany to the north, and Austria and Liechtenstein to the east? Number eight, we showed you the flag of Argentina. Uh, we needed the name of the capital city spelt correctly. Number nine, which word goes before, precedes, sorry, vest, beans, and quartet? And number 10, the first CSI TV series CSI crime scene investigation was set in which city? Don't leave a blank. Have a guess. Give you a few more seconds on that. Right then, because here are the answers for round two. Uh, which country has the longest coastline? Canada. Had to be up there, didn't it, with Russia and Australia. There's a few candidates, but Canada, a massive coastline, lots of inlets as well, loads of them. So it's Canada. Uh, number two, one of the biggest soap whodunits, uh, Kristen Shepherd shot J.R. Ewing. J.R. Ewing. I think we're accepting J.R., aren't we? Yeah, we're going to accept. We're going to accept J.R. And I think Kristen Shepherd, she was the niece of them. Um, Bing Crosby, I think. I'm pretty sure she was. Number three, the creation of which mathematical symbol is credited to Robert Record as long ago as 1556? It's the equal sign. I suppose it had to be one of the, one of the more you know, obvious ones uh, being that long ago. But it was equals. Well done if you got that. Number four, vanilla is a member of the orchid family. Number five, the crew of the De Gratia discovered the Mary Celeste. They still haven't got a clue what happened to the crew. They're all gone. All of them. Number six. Which colour pill did Neo take? Red. It was the red pill that revealed an unpleasant truth. Number seven. Uh, which landlocked country was bordered? Italy to South France. There was Germany there. It was Switzerland. Well done if you said that. Now, it's confession time. Number eight, we wanted the name of the capital of, of uh, Argentina spelled correctly. This is the answer. It's Buenos Aires, and it's spelled A-I-R-E-S. Unlike myself, who's been spelling it A-R-I-E-S his whole life, which, as we know, is the uh, sign of the zodiac. So it's Buenos, B-U-E-N-O-S, it's A-I-R-E-S. Be honest, have you been spelling it the same way? Probably not, it's just no, I'm an idiot. Number nine, the answer, which word can precede Vest, Beans and Quartet? It was, of course, String. String Vests. Are they still going? 
My granddad used to wear one of them. String vest. And he had string beans, but he was never part of a string quartet. So, what a shame. Uh, and number 10, the first uh, CSI TV series, Crime Scene Investigation, was set in Las Vegas. Not easy, well, unless you're a massive fan. I think there was a few, it was in Miami and New York, all sorts of things going on. Well, congratulations. How did you get on? Or is it uh, commiserations? I hope you scored well. I reckon if you got eight of those, you were doing very well. Very well indeed. And Sean's teaser, the first number one hit for the Beatles in the USA in late January 1964 was I Want to Hold Your Hand, which I think only their third or second number one in uh, the UK. So well done if you said that. It means absolutely nothing. But I'm giving you a virtual pat on the back. Well done. Right. Mm. Oh, voice is going. Let's have a, a just a very quick breather. Uh, if you are new uh, to the quiz, welcome. As I said, this is the time when we toast our National Health Service or whatever it's called in your particular country. Obviously, there's still a lot going on. There's still people, um, unfortunately, uh, afflicted with COVID. So here's to all the people keeping us safe. Well done. <clears throat> Thank you for giving me the chance <clears throat> to drink alcohol. Also, a big shout out to my Uncle John. I've got to mention it. Uncle John, congratulations. He's just been named the Employee of the Month for the 10th month running. That's quite a feat. I mean, he's self-employed. But, um, no, well, well done. It's time for a picture round. We're going to be aspirational this week. We can all aspire to the positions that these people have reached because they are all officially, uh, supposedly, billionaires. We're going to show you pictures of 10 billionaires, ladies and gentlemen. We just need you to write down the answers. Simple as that. Here's one to five. And there they are. <clears throat> what do we think about that then? Obviously, uh, there are various stages of their... Uh, well, they're all younger, basically. They're all younger. What do we think of those? No matter how much money you got, I reckon they'd all like to turn back the clock to when they look like that, don't you? Apart from number three, let's be honest. It's like it's part of a Bee Gees tribute band, a very bad one as well. Number four, obviously a, a, a sportsman. But unless you know your sport, you'll struggle with that one. So some very recognisable faces there. Uh, I'm not doing too bad on that. How about you? Let's show you six to ten. I think it's slightly trickier, six to ten. Number six, look. That, that looks like a lockdown haircut, doesn't it? <laughs> So does seven. This could be lockdown haircut round. Six and seven, look. Number six, would you buy a used car from this man? My word. Number eight. Oh, those eyes. Uh -uh. Number nine, a fine head of hair, sir. No lockdown problems for you. Number ten hasn't got to worry about lockdown hair problems, does he? Really? What do we think? Some very uh, well-known faces there, but uh, they're at various stages of their uh, their life. Most of them are younger. Let's go back to one to five. Yeah, I think I'll be all right on most of them, I think. Three and... I look and one a bit. Why is it billionaires and nerds, aren't they? I'll get sued now, aren't I? Their brains work differently than ours. Okay, let's give you a bit more time on six to ten. So I think it's slightly trickier, six to ten. We'll let you have a bit of a longer ponder over those five. What do we think, gang? B 
billionaire, so they're all, all obviously um, incredibly well known all over the planet. So no matter what country you come from, you should recognise all ten of those people. Right, I'll give you a few more seconds. Jot down anything. Always worth a, a hunch if you're not sure. Right, let's give you the answers. Good luck. Number one. The man himself with the Jay-Z. Number two. Of course, it's J.K. Rowling. Now, number three, much of he's in the news all the time, really, isn't he? Bill Gates. Number four, sporting legend, Michael Jordan. Number five, Stephen Spielberg. Call me, Stephen. Just call me. You know where I am. Mr. Spielberg. That's what I call him. Number six, Richard Branson. I doubt whether we'd want to go back to that, would you? Number seven, great Oprah Winfrey. We'll accept, uh, yeah, we'll accept Oprah. We've known for her first name, isn't she? On her show. I'm sure you know her second name. Now, number eight, I think, was probably the trickiest one because... He has lost that fine head of hair. It's Jeff Bezos. Hasn't done his bank account any harm, has it? Really, let's be honest. Jeff Bezos, of course. Uh, all these people are always in the news. Number nine. Right up there with Mr. Steven Spielberg is Mr. George Lucas. Obviously the brains behind the whole Star Wars franchise. And number ten is the press magnate, Rupert Murdoch. So I think that was slightly kinder than dogs last week, don't you? But uh, some lovely pictures there. Well done, Jane. Some great pictures. So, how did you get on? I'm hoping you should have got about eight, I should think. I hope. I hope. Well, it's time to, uh, to start round four already. It's the final round. It's ten general knowledge questions. And here is question. Ah, oh, first of all, I'm going to tell you about uh, another event we've got going um, here at questquizzing.com. Now, on Saturday the 6th of June, you can take part in not the World Quiz Championships. This was the date when we were all supposed to meet up in various venues, a couple of venues, uh, uh, one in Scotland, one down south, um, and take part in the World Quizzing Championships, of course, because of COVID-19. They've been postponed to December to, for us to actually meet in person. But we are holding a quiz online on the 6th of June 2020. Jane's going to tell you more about it afterwards. So I think it's a, it's a chance for you at home who, who supported us uh, so well over the last 10 weeks to actually participate in an event. The greats like Kevin Ashman and Pat Gibson will be playing, Paul Sinner. And you can test yourself against these people. And you can put your result into the system and you can see how you got on against them. So why not have a go? Um, Jane's going to tell you more about that uh, at the end. But, you know, have a go. You've got nothing to lose. Just see where you rank. And who knows? This could encourage you to uh, regularly take part in the Grand Prix events that happen on the first Saturday of every month. So this is not the World Quizzing Championships. Uh, yet yeah, test your knowledge. Come and have a go. Questquizzing.com. Again, Jane will tell you more about that at the end. I should be taking part as well. So there will be people that you can beat. All right. Okay, so let's start round four, the final round. Question number one. When an armed kidnapper demanded that she get out of her car, which member of the British royal family replied, not bloody likely? She probably sounded a bit posher than that. I won't attempt to do a, an, an impression. When an armed kidnapper demanded that she get out of her car, which member of the British royal family replied, not bloody likely? Talking of royalty, the National Trust is back open uh, in, in, uh, in Britain, which is great. So you can go and visit all these wonderful places. 
get out of the house. I went to Hever Castle recently because I live in Kent. Uh, and of course, it was the childhood home of Henry VIII's second wife. Security was a bit lax, though. You could have just ambled in. Am ambled in. Ambled in. Ambled in. Oh, dear. Question number two. The restaurant at the end of the universe is the second installment in which five book trilogy? The restaurant at the end of the universe is the second installment in which five book trilogy? For all you sci fi fans out there, it gets you going, doesn't it, when you think about the universe? I mean, I was lying there the other night looking at the sky and you could see every star because of the lack of pollution in the galaxy, and every star, and I lay there, and I just remember thinking, where's my roof gone? You know what I mean? What happened? Strange, isn't it? Restaurant at the End of the Universe is the second instalment in which five-book trilogy? Question number three. If you were painting with tempera, what foodstuff would you be using to bind together colour pigments? If you were painting with tempura, what foodstuff would you be using to bind together colour pigments? Maybe you're an artist. If you're not, have a guess. A foodstuff that could bind together colour pigments. Not easy. They're only easy if you know them, aren't they, really? Question four is sport, which is the last event in a decathlon? Which is the last event in a decathlon? I won't be doing one of them anytime soon. I've sprained my thumb, haven't I? Popping a cork out of a champagne bottle. I'm going to have to go for physiotherapy. Number four, what's the last event in a decathlon? Question number five, geography. Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin are parts of which country? Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin are a part of which country? Have you been there? Particularly if you if you enjoy cruising, and I mean, you know what I mean by that. P and O. I don't mean anything else. Aruba, Curaçao, and St Martin. A part of which country? Question six. Periwinkle and ultramarine are shades of which colour? Periwinkle and ultramarine are shades of which colour? See, the garden centres are back open, aren't they? I bought a grow bag three weeks ago. I'm taking it back. I tell you, it's still the same size. A nightmare, isn't it? What's all that about? Question six. Periwinkle and ultramarine are shades of which colour? Question seven, sport. In 1950, India withdrew from the World Cup because FIFA refused to let them play without what? In 1950, India withdrew from the World Cup because FIFA refused to let them play without what? Question eight. Which popular fizzy drink was created because the US couldn't ship Coca-Cola syrup to Germany during World War II? Which popular fizzy drink was created because the US couldn't ship Coca-Cola syrup to Germany during World War II? Great story. I didn't know this. It was pointed out to me. 
great question. Is anyone into these health supplements? What do we think about those? I'm on, I'm on my third bottle of Mr. Muscle, and I'm just feeling odd. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. If it works for you, great. But I need to lie down, I think. <coughs> Number eight, which popular fizzy drink was created because the US couldn't ship Coca-Cola syrup to Germany during World War II? Question nine from you culture vultures. Shylock is a central character in which of Shakespeare's plays. Shylock is a central character in which of Shakespeare's plays. And there's Al Pacino who played him in the big screen version. Shylock is a central character in which of Shakespeare's plays. I have a guess, 37 to pick from. And number 10, again, is the final question. Time goes to quit when you're having fun. There we go. This is the first line from which 1980s hit. I come home in the morning light. My mother says, when are you going to live your life right? This is the first line from which 1980s hit. I come home in the morning light. My mother says, when are you going to live your life right? I did it my way. No, I'm joking. It's not. Don't let me confuse you. I'm an idiot. This is the first line from which 80s hits. I come home in the morning light. My mother says, when you're going to live your life right. What is the name of that song? And there we go. Let's have a recap for round four. Number one, when an armed kidnapper demanded that she get out of her car, which member of the British royal family replied, not bloody likely. Number two, the restaurant at the end of the universe is the second installment in which five-book trilogy? Question three, if you were painting with tempura, which, which food stuff would you be using to bind together color pigments? Number four, which is the last event in a decathlon? Number five, Aruba, Curacao, and St. Martin are part of which country? Number six, periwinkle and ultramarine are shades of which color? Number seven, in 1950, India withdrew from the World Cup because FIFA refused to let them play without what? Number eight, which popular fizzy drink was created because the US couldn't ship Coca-Cola syrup to Germany during World War II? Number nine, Shylock is a central character in which of Shakespeare's plays? And number 10, this is the first line from which 80s hit I come home in the morning light. My mother says, when are you going to live your life right? We'll give you a few more seconds. Don't leave any gaps. Write down anything. Have a guess. Went to Tesco's early. The old security guard was there on the door. He had his name badge on. It's called Noah, which made sense because he was letting us in two by two. You know, that was good. Right. I think that's enough. Certainly enough jokes. I'm sure we'd agree. The answers. Number one, when an armed kidnapper demanded she get out of a car, Princess Anne said, not bloody likely. We could also accept Princess Royal for that answer. Number two, the restaurant at the end of the universe is the second instalment in which five-book trilogy? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. A sixth book was written after Adams died. I think it's co-written by his wife and Owen Kofer. Number three. The answer to, if you were painting with tempura, which food stuff would you be using? It binds uh, together color pigments. It's egg yolk. They use egg yolk. would accept egg. Egg yolk. The answer to question number four, the last event in a decathlon is the 1500 meters, which makes sense because if they did that at the start of the day, they'd be pooped. Question five, the answer, Aruba, Curacao, and St. Martin, are uh, part of which country? They're all the Netherlands. They all sort of uh, are overseen by the Netherlands, constitutionally part of the Netherlands, however you want to phrase it. And you'll, and you'll know them if, like me, you go cruising around the Caribbean. Number six, periwinkle and ultramarine are shades of blue. Shades of blue. Number seven, in 1950, India withdrew from the World Cup because FIFA refused to let them play without football boots. Boots. That's pretty, pretty tough FIFA, that, I mean. Number eight, uh, the answer, great question, 
really, to this. Uh, which which popular fizzy drink was created because the USA obviously couldn't trade with Germany during World War II uh, and ship Coca-Cola syrup to them? It was Fanta. Its inventor said it was made from leftovers of leftovers. It wasn't even orange to start with. That was down to the Italians years later. What was in the original version? Answers on a postcard, please. Oh, my word. Fanta. Would have thought that was invented in wartime Germany. Number nine, Shylock is a central character in The Merchant of Venice. Famously demands his pound of flesh from the heart of Antonio. And number ten, the first line of the ATC. I come home in the morning light. Mother says, when are you going to live your life right? It was... Of course, Cindy Lauper's girls just want to have fun. There we go. That's it for another week. That's our 10th week. How did you get on? Uh, what was the standard like? Let us know. More importantly, put your answers into the system. We'd love to know how you got on. Give us a rough idea of how many people are playing as well and from which countries you're playing from. Don't forget, tomorrow uh, Tomorrow is not the World Championships. Uh, gives you the chance to uh, put yourself up against the big boys and girls. Uh, they'll all be playing, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, permitting. Pat Gibson certainly will. Kevin Ashman. Uh, you know, pick your wits against these people and see how you get on against them. Uh, what can I say? Stay safe. I'll see you in a week's time. Same place, same time, Friday night, 8 o'clock. Uh, my special thanks to uh, the brilliant David Burton, our tech whiz, Jules Bowes, and I'll pass you back to the queen of quiz, Jane Allen. See you. Sean, thank you so much. That was absolutely fantastic. Even the cheesy jokes uh, were brilliant. Thank you very, very much for that. Um, and thank you for telling everybody about the uh, Not the World Quizzing Championships. As Sean said, uh, we usually run the World Quizzing Championships on the first weekend of June. But uh, because of this COVID uh, virus, we've had to move that to December. So we thought we'd do a half World Championships called Not the World Championships. And that will be happening on the 6th of June. Um, you can take part in it. Um, you just can play along from home um, just for fun, or you can join one of our proctored rooms, entirely up to you. Um, and you can see how you do against the absolute quiz greats, Kevin Ashman, Pat Gibson, Anne Hegarty, Paul Sinar, all of those people will all be playing along with uh, quiz heroes from all over the world. The quiz is tough. It is a proper sports uh, level quiz. So we play competitive quiz at this level. Um, so, you know, don't expect it to be a walk in the park. But if you'd like to have a go at it um, or you'd like to just see what it's all about, the quiz itself is free to download. Uh, we just ask for voluntary uh, donations. So if you don't like it, you don't have to give us anything. If you love it, you know, give us a few quid. That would be great. And you should be able to see somewhere up above me here how uh, you join um, and play. But you just head to quiz quizzing uh, or quest.quizzing.com and in the schedule you will find that quiz and you can just sign up to home playing or to actually come to one of our proctored quizzes if you're feeling really brave. Okay so thanks for that and quest.quizzing.com is also where you go to to put your scores in for this evening so when I stop talking the screen will come up and we'll tell you how to do that um, and I am heading over now to Facebook um, so our Facebook page is quizzing tv Come and find me there. I'd love to chat to you and find out how you got on this evening. OK, thanks very much. See you again next week.